Uh, yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. How, uh, sure. how are you tonight? I'm doing fine. I've never used uh, OBS before, so <laughs> sorry about the lack of image. <laughs> That's okay. Um, we're not streaming images out anyway. It's just uh, me and Scott on screen, but obviously everyone's oh, okay. here now, so um, okay. did you have a question or a topic? Well, I was just scrolling through YouTube, seeing who was live, and I came across this stream, so I decided, hey, this sounds interesting. I saw that uh, one of you, or maybe both of you, is an ex-Jehovah Witness. Yes, we're both or... ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. I had a Jehovah Witness just recently, maybe three, four weeks ago, uh, give me a little pamphlet, and she okay. said this... She said, well, what did she say exactly? Something about this will prove to you that God is real or something of that nature. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, mentally rolling my eyes, but whatever. And then I read it, and it was literally circular reason reasoning. It, it, it would show Bible verses to prove that the Bible is real. Uh, I, w I took a picture of it. I have it on my phone somewhere. I should have looked for it before I started on here, but we won't worry with it. But it just really blew my mind because uh, I know there are a lot of Christians out there and religious people out there who do have arguments. Granted, I think all the ones I've heard at least are terrible, but this one was just like, wow. <laughs> so well, the know, God of the Bible, the Bible because is the Bible says the God. <laughs> the Bible's all true, sir. It even says so right there in the Bible. <laughs> right. It's, so I was just, I was flabbergasted, really. I, I, I just couldn't get over it. I thought, wow, this is absolutely the worst uh, pamphlet as far as trying to prove God I've ever seen. And I've seen some that are at least a little bit better than what that was. Some will at least try to use philosophy and still fail, but at least they're attempting uh so yeah so i just wanted to mention that and if, if you guys need me to leave or anything um i don't no, have a problem no. with that i just want to no. throw that out there no no we're, uh, we're quite quite happy to have a conversation about this um obviously uh both me and scott we were you know being jehovah's witnesses we were people who had to uh uh, regrettably go about uh giving those pamphlets out to people and uh you know arguing ah, okay for, the existence of uh, uh, Jehovah, but um, yeah, they they do have a re it's, it's very circular reasoning, and you know, and you know, and you're just taught to you know produce Bible verses and you know cross reference those verses with other verses. You you're taught <laughs> to you know make make it sound good, make it sound legit, um, but. Right. You've you've got to also think, remember as well with Charles Witnesses, it's like a it's a very uh, it's a very high level cult. So it's um, the cult indoctrination is very strong from a very young age. A lot of those oh, Charles Witnesses yeah. have been in since birth. Um, so you know sometimes it you know, obviously the talking bullshit, but they actually believe the bullshit <laughs> a lot of them. So oh oh um, yeah, you know I I I know they truly believe it. I. For me, I came from a Pentecostal Assemblies of God, really strong fundamentalist uh, family. Mm -hmm. uh, even homeschooled, like they homeschooled me and my siblings our entire lives, and our entire education and curriculum was all based on the Bible and God and Christianity in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I joke around, I say my math book actually was religious too because it said if Jesus has five fingers on one hand and he has five fingers on the other hand, then how many fingers does Jesus have? I mean, essentially, <laughs> <laughs> that was almost, it's close to being accurate, I put it to you that way. It's close to not being a joke. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Jehovah's Witnesses, you'll see in that pamphlet, they'll be talking a lot about I guess it was uh, 1 Timothy 3.16 or 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is inspired of God and beneficial for teaching, reproving. And, uh, you know, they that's the go-to scripture. Like, if someone was to ask, you know, but why should we believe the Bible is true? 
Oh, right. It says right here in 2 Timothy 3.16, <laughs> all scripture is inspired of God. So <laughs> therefore, you know, it's like it doesn't really do anything, you know, if you're a critical thinking person. Right. It, exactly. Because uh, like I said, I've heard some religious people put out some arguments that at least uh had a little bit of weight to them which obviously isn't a whole lot but at least they tried but on this path what got you out Why you you, what got you out of christianity oh uh <laughs> it was a gradual process um first thing i think the first thing that really started to make me look at the bible a bit more skeptical was when i realized that hell is there's four different words in Greek and in uh, uh, what is it Hebrew mm -hmm. collectively four different words that they all translate into one word hell mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and each word has a very different meaning yet it granted not all Bibles make this mistake but you know a good portion of them still do or still do to some degree and uh, I thought wait a second how why would god allow his infallible word to be translated in a way that's so messy mm -hmm. and i know hell is just a tip of the iceberg you know if you listen to uh bart ertman or uh the rest of them who actually study it it's like that's that's nothing <laughs> yeah exactly and, and so that really made me that that's when my gear started to turn and uh and then I would watch atheist videos and they'd say, look, it shows here in the Bible that you can uh, beat your slave, but you just can't kill him. And I was thinking, that's not in the Bible. The Bible is all about <laughs> love. Even though I grew up w almost eating the Bible, I had I never really thought about, wow, these there are some really mm. screwed up passages in the Bible. Like yeah. uh, that, that one prophet was bald headed and the kids are making fun of him. And so... Mm he curses them and God sends a wild animal to eat them. And again, I'm thinking there's no way that's actually in the Bible. That's just some atheist talking, you know, out of his ass because he hates God. You know, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was pretty much taught to think mm -hmm. or taught how to think. And, uh, but then as I started to read the Bible, it really like with fresh eyes with this eye of, Hey, you know, maybe some of this is questionable. And, it just made me realize there's just no way an all-perfect, all-loving, omnipresent God is real, or at least not the God of the Bible, because the Bible God or the Abrahamic God, he is a maniac. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so I kind of became what I would call agnostic light, which is what I would define as I kind of believe in God, but I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and then from there, I turned into an atheist. And then from atheist to pretty much anti-theist. <laughs> like, it's not just enough for me not to believe in God. I want others to not believe in God, too, because I think it's better for society as a whole. Yeah. So, you know, one of the theories that, that I have is that I think the more fundamental, more fundamentalist Christian you are, the more easier it is. Now, this sounds kind of... Um, unintuitive but i'll tell you why i believe this but first the, the thing that i that i'm theorizing is that the more fundamentalist you are as a as a christian the easier it will be for you to leave christianity and the reason i say that is because usually fundamentalists have this whole thing of the bible's either true or it's not it's very binary it's right. very like it's either all in or all out. Like it's got to be perfect. It's all infallible word of God. Yeah. But if you're like one of these, you know, fake flag waving Christians, right? <laughs> right, right. You're going to be these liberal, weak kneed Christians. You're going to be very, oh, well, you can interpret it. Maybe I was just wrong in the way I was interpreting it. Actually, God didn't mean this. He meant right. that way of making it all nice and airy fairy right, right? cherry picking basically yeah very very exactly and even if even for the scriptures you don't like a liberal christian can just simply say oh well that part of the bible eh, that's not true that's just 
that was just ancient man's um, take on it. Right. The part about love and the part about giving to the poor. This is the part that's real. And those people will always find an excuse to stay in Christianity because they'll always be able to reinterpret and post hoc rationalize stuff away. Whereas like a fundamentalist like yourself and like me and Katie, we're more like, you know, it's either all true or it's all bullshit. Right. You know, it takes yeah. one little weak chain in the link to break. And then the rest of it just falls like a house of cards, you know? Well, I, I absolutely agree because it's funny. Uh, I've thought about making like a little video essay on this particular topic um, about how at least fundamentalists are being consistent. Mm -hmm. Like, it, granted, it's to a fault and they are, I mean, it, you can't help but laugh at them. But at least they're being consistent, whereas liberal Christians, nothing wrong with, I'm not dissing the liberal mm -hmm. ideology, mm -hmm. but the liberal Christian, right. the idea of, well, some of it's good, some of it's, you know, it's not what it really means. Uh, that mm -hmm. kills me because that just shows you don't really have a foundation. You're, 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 it's like you're going to a buffet of scriptures and religion, and you're saying, okay, I want some of this. Oh, I don't want none of that, though, but I will take some of this over here some of this over there, but, oh, but I don't want this over here. Something about, you know, stoning gay people. No, we don't want that. You know, that, exactly. that was never in the Bible. And that, yeah. that, that mentality really, even though I would rather be in a world full of Christians who are like that, at the same time, ironically, it does piss me off because it's like you're not being logically consistent. Like, that, right. is, that uh, cognitive dissonance probably bugs me more than most things. <laughs> I think you're, you know, you're on to something. And I think too, that part of the reason you're able to leave is because you didn't dig, you didn't know so much about, like you mentioned the slavery, the things that you didn't mm -hmm. even know in the Bible. Now the problem is like, especially from the world me and Katie come from is that Jehovah's Witnesses own that stuff a hundred percent. Like you'll be surprised. Like they talk about <laughs> Labor in the Bible. Like I, I, I used to read about it and I never winked an eye about it because the way that they presented it was like, right. you know, slaves and this was what happened with Hebrews and they just kind of glossed over it, but it was like accepted and everybody just had to accept that's what it was. Like, and no one really questioned it, which is really odd. I didn't start questioning this until other things started coming along. And then it was like a second, secondary afterthought. Wait a minute. Yeah, we were talking about slavery. Why did I never see that that was all fun? right? It, it, like, you it, know, one of the things that we learned as Jehovah's Witnesses um, was about the story of um, Jephthah. Now, Jephthah in the book of Judges, he was a guy who was a warrior and he went to war and he told, he asked Jehovah, he said, Look, if you will give these people into my hand, I will sacrifice. The first, oh um, yeah, first I see coming back, yeah. mm -hmm. and he sacrificed his own daughter in the fire and, and produced her as a burnt offering to Jehovah. Yeah, and all of that to us was just taught. See, the lesson here is, you know, always honor Jehovah, always honor the be you know, faithful the promise, and and Jehovah will always bless you and be true to His promise. And so we're like, yeah, great story, but <laughs> we never. It never really registers with us that that's kind of fucked up, though. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, when you with heavy indoctrination, is you you know you it it's you know building up those blinkers, isn't it? It's putting those blinkers on, and uh, you know, so you, you, there's two different routes within Christianity. You can either you know just in, uh, teach uh, an alternate interpretation of why these horrible mm. things are mm -hmm. actually decent things. Or you can just throw them out altogether. Um, just hold it. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, this, yeah, that happens. So, <laughs> like, Joe's, that's how fucked up Joe witnesses are. They'll just be like, <laughs> yeah, it happened. So, it, what's the problem again? <laughs> I think probably how I would uh, describe it is you watch a mystery movie, right? Who done it? And mm -hmm. then by the time you realize, oh. You know, by the time the twist comes and you realize who did it, 
you think to yourself, oh, I had no idea. But then you go back and you watch the movie and you say, wait a second, I didn't know. Like, there was clues all throughout it. That's, that's kind of how I feel about the Bible. Like when you're a Christian and you hear about slavery and, uh, you know, stone on virgin women on their wedding nights, uh, you kind of, it doesn't really, for most people, at, at least if you're a kid, it doesn't really click. And they mm -hmm. just skim over it. Like they always bring out, like you alluded to, a good moral message of a mm -hmm. sick, terrible story. But then once you, once you actually think about it, it's like, wait a second, this is some <laughs> BS. Like, and this God is all loving and all, pow all powerful. It would be one thing if it was just all loving and, and not all powerful. Then it's like, okay, well, you know, he can't do anything about it. But yeah. what, let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, if, if, uh, do y'all mind me chatting a little bit more? No, no, it's oh, absolutely no. fine. Go ahead. Oh. Okay, because, yeah, I don't want to, like, take over or anything. If I overstay my welcome, just say, hey, you got to get out of here. <laughs> um, well, we're happy to chat. One thing I have started to ask Christians is this. Okay, most Christians believe that when a baby dies, the baby goes straight to heaven. And most, though not all, Christians are pro-life. They are, they are against abortion 99% of cases. So I'll say, okay, well, if the odds of going to hell are great by being born and living past the age of accountability, whatever the hell that is, um, then isn't it logically, doesn't it logically follow that by killing the baby or aborting the fetus, you guarantee that they will spend an eternity in heaven as opposed to risking their 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 soul's eternal destination, mm -hmm. and oh boy, they do not like that question. They they like this one guy. He's he's probably made like three videos on me now. Keeps saying, "No, you're just you're just saying you want to kill babies." I'm like, oh, "No, yeah. that's not what I'm saying." Like, how do you? Better one. This will this yeah. is this this is better <clears throat> is what you're talking about. You know the um. It actually goes back to the problem of evil. So if you right. think about, like, if if you look at the words of Jesus, right? He says, uh, narrow, like we were, this was beat in our heads as Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, narrow is the, uh, you know, the doorway into um, right. salvation, right? And then mm. wide is the path to destruction. So the odds are, that most people are going to be destroyed. And, and for most Christians, this means hellfire, right? Right. Eternal conscious torment for most people. So it seems like it'd be unethical to even have a baby. It seems like the odds are against your child making it to heaven. And it seems like it's more yeah. probable that they're going to spend the eternity of their existence in hell. Because just simply because they were born. And yep. then this kind of raises the other question. Well, then that kind of puts the onus on God himself, because why would God create anything right. if his knowledge is perfect and he knows everything perfectly? Then obviously he knew that most of his creation were going to suffer in hell forever. And if that's the case, it would be more ethical for God to have not created anything. If, if that's exactly. the only possibility for free will to exist is that some people are or most people are going to choose to go to hell, then why create anything at all? It yeah. seems like that's unethical on God's part. You know, yeah, it makes God a moral monster. There was an argument given by a, a, a philosopher about that, you know, which, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter what's what you look at as far as God's attributes. You know, either he's you know, it, either he's able to do something but unwilling to do something, or he's uh, you know willing to do something and unable to do something. So right. Um, well, yeah. Go ahead. It, well, no, I I didn't mean to interrupt you. You you go ahead. No, that 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 was just you know basically the point I was trying to make is that you know either God's not all powerful, or God's a moral monster. And the majority of religions yes. out there say he's all powerful. So yeah, on top of all loving, <laughs> yeah, which is just well, an, an illogical contradiction. Well, then it's kind of and this is funny because that's actually another argument I've used is it, 
God knows whenever a soul is born, God knows where that soul is going to end up when that soul dies. So when a soul dies and goes to hell, he knew that soul was going to go to hell before that before that soul was even a sperm. Mm -hmm. Yet God made these lost souls, quote unquote, anyway. So that makes him worse than I would say, if you think about it, that's even worse than Hitler. Because oh, yeah. because like Hitler, yes, he was terrible. You can't say enough bad things about him. But with God, it, not only does he make you suffer in life, or excuse me, as some people say, allow you to suffer in life, but he will cast you into the lake of never in torment after you die. And he knew he was going to do that before he even started the universe, according to Christianity. Yeah, he knew everything. So it's like you can look at it in legal terms. Like suppose you're a scientist and you run a privately owned lab somewhere downtown. And in your lab, you've actually created these robots that are conscious and have free will. You created them. Big breakthrough for you. But let's <laughs> say they broke out of their lab. They broke out of your lab and they went into town and started murdering everybody. Would that scientist be held responsible for his machines that went out and fucking hurt people and killed people? I think so. I've used that same analogy. That's so funny. I, I, cause I agree because, like, let's say there was a man and he invented a robot. Before he laid the first wire to the robot, he knew this robot was going to go out and kill people. Yet he made the robot anyway. Like, mm -hmm. that is obvious. Like, sure, he didn't literally kill them by his own hand, but he right. did create something that he knew was going to kill somebody or Correct. multiple people. Correct. Christians hate those questions, though. <laughs> Oh, they hate him. They, they, they also hate the one about um, Jesus being tempted by the devil. Like, if Jesus is God and he owns everything, then how did Satan tempt him to begin with? Like, oh, yeah. Well, I, no, he breaks in your house hard. and you worship me, or I'm going to, or I'm going to, um, you know, if you worship me, I'll let you watch your own TV in your own house. Like, <laughs> really? and, and it's, it's even worse because, for example, I, I don't understand how Christians get so emotional and teary-eyed over the sentence, God gave his only begotten son. Because it's like, assuming the story is true, which it's not, but let's just assume, um, Jesus knew he wasn't actually going to die. He was just going to walk around the afterlife for a couple of days and come back to life. <laughs> Like nothing ever happened, but oh, he what a sacrifice that was! <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like it's like if somebody was coming to kill you, I would say, Okay, listen, I'm going to take a three day vacation for you so that this person won't kill you. It's like, Well, that's nice and all, but it's not really a sacrifice, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> and and if you know what I'm if I'm gonna choose you or deny you before I before you even do any of this, then what's the point? Like, why even make me to begin with if you knew I was gonna hear this story and think it was BS? <laughs> a lot of plot holes, man. Yeah, right, right. That should be that would be a good title for a book. Christianity yeah. uh, <laughs> plot holes or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, gets, it gets even more lame if you're one of these, uh, you know, if you hear one of these Christians who believe in the Trinity, because, you know, then it, it, he's not sending down his his son. He's just sending down one part of himself, one attribute of himself and sacrificing well, that. But then it still exists afterwards as part of God still. So it, it's like, okay, right, well, well, what have you sacrificed? Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's funny because... I know one time I said, which I'm sure you've, you've heard this before, God sent himself to kill himself to save us from himself. That's and this right. one guy was like, no, that's not right. And also God's a trinity. So I said, okay, let me correct it. God sent a part of himself <laughs> to kill a part of himself to save us from a part of himself. Is that better? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> What they really hate is when you when if these people feel like God is Jesus is God and God is Jesus equally and all this stuff, then every time I start talking about Noah's flood and drowning babies, I always refer to Jehovah as or the Father as Jesus. 
like when Jesus sent the flood to Noah, you know, <laughs> and then they're like, no, Jesus didn't do that. Like, wait a minute. Yeah, he did. Right. You know? Yeah. It's like, well, y'all, you believe he's one and still three and, but also one. Like, yeah. Speaking of uh, Noah's flood, it's funny as I began, as I pretty much became what I, what I said earlier, agnostic like where I kind of believed in God, but I wasn't really sure. Like I went from like hundred percent Christianity to like 50% to now like negative a <laughs> hundred. Um, right. I remember being in church with my girlfriend at the time and we went to go pick up her friend's kid from uh, the, uh, what do they call it? Would they keep the kids while church is going? Children's mm -hmm. church. Yeah. And I remember looking, and this is when it really hit me, looking at all the paintings on the wall for these the, these children. It was, uh, you know, Noah and the Ark and the two cute little tigers and lions and bears on my, all, that, all over the wall. And then it hit me, wait a second. Y'all think this is appropriate for kids? This is like one of the most horrendous passage in the Bible, story in the Bible about God killing literally every single man, woman, pregnant woman, child, disabled person in a flood except for a small family. Like, yeah. like <laughs> how is oh, this appropriate? Man. Oh, it's, it's crazy. It, it, it's, 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 you know, it's a not a never ending. Like the, the, if you look at the whole Bible, the whole story, like if you look at it as a big, long story, mm -hmm. and you just see God is just this inept, you know, manager of the universe. Like he's always having to complain about his shit. He creates shit. He's not satisfied with. He, he has to repent that he created man on the face of the earth. You know, he feels sorry that he created anything and he has to start over and over and over again. You know, he destroys the world in a flood. And that's not it. Then he's got to destroy like Sodom and Gomorrah. He's got to do right. all this destroying because <laughs> He keeps fucking up and he keeps repeating a, 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 just a just a comedy of errors. <laughs> <laughs> but he's all perfect and all powerful. <laughs> yeah, it makes lots of sense. That's... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so were, were you guys Jehovah Witnesses uh, like from day one, like uh, as children or? Not me. I, I came in later. I um, studied a lot with like church of christ and like you know born again sort of churches and did little youth leadership and stuff like that and then um you know i spoke then i kind of drifted off of that as a young man and mm -hmm. jehovah's witnesses got with me and, and set me straight on some of the trinity stuff and problems and then i fell into that probably around the age of 21 22 mm -hmm. and stayed with it until I was about 25 or 26, and then I got out of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was born in, uh, left when I was 18. Uh, so luckily I had, uh, d didn't put too much time into it. Um, is there, are there any uh, beliefs that you, y'all used to hold that you used to find comfort in, and that's like the one downfall you don't have anymore? Well, there's the obvious one, which is, you know, like, you know, what happens after death? I mean, yeah, uh, I think anyone absolutely. who's religious is, uh, would, you know, that's a big reason to believe is, you know, that it, it, it brings you hope that once you, if, you know, you lose loved ones, you'll see them again. Um, and, you know, once you die, you'll, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be resurrected or you'll go to heaven or something like that. Um, obviously that's a, a that that's a big one, but you know the I, I've now come to value since leaving. I've now come to value the short time that we have on this planet, and I think it's very yeah, important absolutely. to finding meaning in life is having that time period where you know that you've only got that short amount of time, and you've got to use that time wisely to better humanity in some way. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's kind of the same for me, too. When I left, when I finally left all the religions alone, um, it, I was kind of sad for a long time because I felt same. like, wow. Yeah, well, sad, like just remorseful. Like I felt like, where am I going to go? Like mm -hmm. now there's no afterlife or any hope for an afterlife and there's no God and there's this and that. And I became very angry. 
because on the one hand, I was angry that I was lied to about so many different things. Mm -hmm. That's what got me out. I felt like I started seeing reality differently and understanding reality differently, but it left me with this, this, um, hope. And I always wanted, I was like, if they never just, if they just never introduced this shit to me from the beginning, I mm -hmm. wouldn't be sad right now. Yeah, I wouldn't be exactly. Like, you know, and, but it took me a while to wean off of it. And, and now I'm like, I look at death, like, um, it's inevitable, but it's nothing to be scared of for myself. Right. But I will admit, like, if one of my children were to die or something like that, it would kill me. Like, yeah. I know that they're gone forever. They'll never exist again. And that's sad because I have to live in this world with the knowledge that they're gone. Their little personalities are gone. Their little things they did for me and that mm -hmm. I did for them and our relationship is gone forever. It's just a memory right now. And that's sad. But, you know, for me personally, I don't really, I, I'm more sad to see other people I care for die than myself. If I die, I feel like, all my problems are kind of over at that point, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I, I agree with, with, with both of you. You're exactly right. For me, uh, it's funny. When, when I realized that I truly could no longer believe in God, where I was completely incapable, incapable of believing in God, just in the same way I'm incapable of believing in Krishna or the Easter Bunny, mm -hmm. it, it hit me. I thought, wow. Where am I? Like, Germania, where are you going to go when you die? And I thought, I'm going nowhere. I'm just, my body is going back to the earth and my consciousness will be out. And that was really scary for me. Because uh, like you said, when you're, if you were never introduced to this thought, you wouldn't have cared. You'd just be like, yeah, you live, you die. That's just the way it goes. But when you, when your whole life is based on this hope of, uh, uh, not only going to eternal bliss, but also seeing your dead loved ones and all the ones you've met along the way uh, that you'll eventually see them again. That was really hard on me. It was really crushing. Uh, but at the same time, there was a, uh, there's many pros to it, but this is one of the big pros for me. I was completely terrified of hell. Mm. I, I mean, I, I remember, a beautiful, bright, sunny day. I think it was a Saturday. And I could not enjoy a lunch on that Saturday because I was so worried that I would go to hell. I actually had a condition called, uh, which this wasn't diagnosed at the time. I recently learned of this condition and I realized that's exactly what I had. It's called scrupulosity. scrupulosity. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember how to spell it, but when they de when they described it, and what people and the things people deal with when they have scrupulosity, I thought, holy hell, that was exactly a hundred and ten percent what I had. It's mm -hmm. like extreme religious OCD. You, you you are literally afraid that you're not being as perfect as God would, requires you to be. So you're pretty much effed if you mess up in anything. In anything. I went through it too. I got diagnosed with it too. Oh, and really? Yeah. I even did a whole show on um, scrupulosity um, on the other uh, digital free thought radio. Um, yeah. Scrupulosity is, is not a joke, man. I used to worry about just thinking bad thoughts. Like if I saw an opposite sex oh, and yeah. had bad thoughts about or what bad thoughts or whatever, well, uh, then I was like, I felt like, oh, shit. God is going to fucking kill me, or punish me forever. And even if, and, and the thing about that was, even if like I would go to the elders in my congregation and they, and I would try to seek encouragement and they'd mm -hmm. say, look, Jesus, you know, you're saved by Jesus and Jehovah knows that and you're covered by the ransom sacrifice and you don't have to worry about um, the judgment. God knows you're a sinner, this and that. Mm -hmm. But actually, that just shows that you're serious about <laughs> yeah, I was so that. Over. So yeah. they actually used that against me and made me a, a ministerial cert, like a leader in the church, because <laughs> they felt like you're gonna you're a good example. This is what more people should be like you, worried about right. More people should be terrified. Yeah, yeah. it's like you know, and then terrible. that just adds to the problems because now they're yes. just giving you more yes. responsibility, which 
is just going to fuel yeah. the, the whole problem that was that, that you know led to that. Like, exactly, and and it needs to beat that scripture into our heads as a ministerial <laughs> servant to the elders. Was um, you know, more responsibility means you're you have more um, uh, 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 accountability. You know, like better that you not be a teacher at all mm. than try to be a shepherd and then fall short on your duties because Jehovah's watching you. And that used to yeah. bother the shit out of me, man. And even after I left, that shit used to kind of stick with me, man. It's like the habits of just worried about my thoughts and worried about <laughs> whether I said something wrong or whatever. And it's like I had to go see, seek help. And they I told me that the only way you can get out of it is you have to just force yourself to willingly, you know, let the thought play out. You know, look at look at someone of the opposite sex and just let that thought play itself out. Um, embrace it. You know, I uh, I'll send you an email to this because I don't want to <laughs> be a sleazeball and shamelessly plug my stuff. But I have something talking about this very thing uh, where I was in a check. I was with my dad. I was probably thirteen at the time. And I remember we were at the grocery store at the checkout line, and I was looking at all the magazines, just looking at them, not not opening them up, just looking at the covers and seeing all the half beautiful naked women on the cover. And like clockwork, I felt damned and dirty, and then I would whisper under my breath, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And I would have to repeat that over and over until I felt like I got it right. And uh, and then I would be doing it mere moments later. And then when I started to learn about uh, <laughs> things you can do with yourself, uh, you know, self gratification, sexual self gratification things. I'm trying to say it in in a way that you won't get demonetized if y'all are monetized. Uh, I realized, wow, I'm definitely not going to make it to heaven, <laughs> and that was just terrifying. Uh, but. I will say this. Uh, thankfully, I don't have any of that baggage. Once I once I realized I can no longer believe in God, especially uh, the God of Christianity, all that fear went away. Occasionally, I'll have a dream where I become a Christian again, and that terrifies me when I have that dream. Um, but but 99.99% of the time, I haven't had any uh, like PTSD type stuff. Which I would imagine many Christians do have that, but thankfully I don't know. Maybe it's just the my brain is like it's a, a safety mechanism. It's like okay, girl, you don't believe this. Let's let's just don't worry about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe on a subconscious level, I don't know. I'm just grateful that I don't struggle with it at all. Oh, it's terrible. Well, uh, we're absolutely thrilled to hear that. You know, it's uh, that you're not suffering with that anymore because. Uh, you know, trauma is terrible. I mean, we've all suffered uh, trauma here in one way or another, and it, it, it's just it's it's a terrible affliction to have to deal with the anxiety that that causes. Uh, you know, and a lot mm -hmm. a lot of trauma has religion to blame for it a lot of the time. Yeah. It seems, uh, and it's uh, you know uh, something we all need to uh, fight against. And I was um, mentioning. Um, a person I used to work with, which was a Zen Buddhist, and he used to always tell me, because we used to talk about this kind of stuff too, mm -hmm. and he used to say, you know, Buddhists, you know, Zen Buddhists, we kind of feel sorry for Christians because you guys <laughs> believe in afterlife stuff and souls. Like, they believe in anatta, which is um, no self, no, no soul, like no afterlife. Like, they believe mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, basically – you know, it's all an illusion in a way. Right. Know? Which kind of, they say, you know, they're proud to say it adds up to what modern science also kind of tells us that, you know, that basically the self is kind of a self, is just a, a thought about a reflection. It's basically just, um, mm. it's kind of a narrative. Mm. So in actuality, you never really exist to begin with. So you don't have to worry about not existing because you really don't exist anyways. You're just an experience. And yeah, the only yeah. thing that really carries on is karma. Trippy. And what the Zen <laughs> Buddhists, how they define karma is not like how the Westerners, um, you know, define it. Karma is just like cause and effect. It basically means like 
you know, after you die, if you treated people like shit and hurt them, well, even after you die, you've still fucked them over. You know, they're still dealing with your shit or the positive stuff too. Right. So it's kind of like a pebble in the, in the, in the ocean. It just, the ripples go. And so your energy and your, you know, your ac actions or whatever have a ripple effect in the world. And that's kind of what humanists and eights, a lot of atheists believe too, mm -hmm. is that we know that our life is short. And so we just have this small window of time to be a good force in the world, to do good things and try to make better a better world. And the Zen Buddhists kind of feel the same way. That's why they're atheists too. Right. And they all they're just they say we're just kind of like atheists with a psychological bent or a um or a more humanist type of outlook is all is the only difference. So it's one of those religions, I guess, that's more in line with what right we, it's more um, rational for sure yeah very rational yeah and, and it helps you it helps you deal with attachments to beliefs and, and de detaching from fears of afterlife right. yeah yeah um uh right i'm going to uh um start wrapping up now so um you know thank you very much uh for calling in uh Grimania. that's been you know, it's been a, a lovely conversation. If you want to call back in again, uh, f uh, feel free. We do this every week. Um, you know, and uh, we, you know, we uh, love chatting with you. So thank you very much for calling in. Oh yeah, thank y'all for having me. Y'all have a good one. Yeah, yeah you, you too. too. Man. Mm -hmm.